Ryan Carter on the mound going to try to pitch through that neck injury. Remember, he went one inning last game. He's taking on Black River today, so the Presidents will send Noah Schmidt, Chris Kowalski, and John Durgan to the plate. The first three batters to face Ryan Carter. I'll set the Proctor defense for you in just a second. And then we call a strike. So we're underway, scheduled for seven. Good, good Black River team. Well, Coach Jim O'Neill, the head coach down on Black River. I forget how many decades he's done it, but he's been here a long time. He does an excellent job with the baseball program. And I'm making a 1-1 one -one count. Just missed outside. Got Kelvin Knowles, defensively at first base. Ricky Carroll's at second base. Keegan McDonald getting the start at shortstop. Chad Thornton is at third base. And of course, there's a swing and a miss. Behind the plate is Matt Dobart. Your left fielder today is Justin Carter, Josh Taranovich in center field, and Justin Blonji, the right fielder. That is the Proctor defense. And a 1-2 count to the leadoff. Batter Schmidt, and the pitch on the way. He will get him swinging for a strike three. I don't like that, though, to see Ryan after he gets done his pitch because Orin bends down with his hands on his knees. I don't know if that's just pain or what, but awful to see him get injured in his senior year of high school ball. You know, going to get his senior year, you want to be as big a part as you can as far as, you know, he loves to pitch. Chris Kowalski up the first baseman for Black River. That looks playable. Taranovich makes the play in center field, so one pitch, and that will retire the batter number two. So we'll come up to John Durgan, who's going to be the starting pitcher for Black River. Durgan bats in that number three spot. A lot of speed, good slap hitter, good bunner. And they have down at the corner Thornton in tight at third base for Proctor, Vermont. So back-to-back left-handed batters to face Ryan Carter. We'll start him off with a breaking ball. And it did appear that he had fooled Durgan on that pitch. Durgan, we call, his nickname is Pipes, because when he was with the Rutland County Royals, he uh, did an interview with me, and he was showing off all his weightlifting endeavors of all the muscles he has. So Pipes, Durgan, will swing on that and miss for strike two. So Ryan Carter looking to have an easy ride here in the first inning. You're watching Munger Vision on Peg TV. That's three breaking balls in a row, and that one missed. It'll be one ball, two strikes. Again, that website for Peg TV is easy to remember. It's www.pegtv.com. You go there and you can click video on demand. You can watch sports or programming anywhere you want on the internet, on your computer, right there at your convenience. And the batter will ask for time, be granted time. Earlier this week, we already saw the Black River women's softball team. Now we're watching the boys' varsity baseball team. Both good programs. Got him to go up the ladder. He'll strike out two or three, and he looked pretty good right there. But we'll see as the game progresses. So Durgan on the mound will face Keegan McDonald, Matt Dobart, Chad Thornton, and in the cleanup spot, Ryan Carter. McDonald gives him a lot of speed at the top of the order, and he will look at strike one. Low and outside, he'll get the call. That's a pitcher's pitch. Durgan with a fastball, curveball, changeup. A little variety of everything he throws. Right there was the rising fastball, and it had some pop on it as he got into the catcher, Kippy Turco. So Turco, I've already mentioned, is your catcher. Kowalski, Chris Kowalski is at first base. Noah Schmidt is at second base. Kyle Ellers is a shortstop, and Tim Rummerell is at third. And that'll make it a 2-2 count. The outfield has Jacob Cavell in left, and center field's Bob Rorig. And Andrew Valenti is your right fielder. So McDonald got a piece of stay alive. Good job. Good. Two strikes to just get a piece of it stay alive. And there is activity in the Proctor bullpen. Now I'm not saying that means that Ryan's neck is acting up and he can't pitch, but there is somebody throwing in the bullpen. Got him. There's that breaking ball. With a, with a two-strike count, that was his out pitch. McDonald will go down, and that is a nasty breaking ball that Johnny Pipes Durgan throws out there. Now the catcher, Matt Dobart, coming off a game where they just couldn't get him out the last game. He just hit everything. Did a good job. I know he was three for three against Leland and Gray. I had to go back to my book. So 
Durgan with some pop on the glove there. And that's we fall out of play so quickly up in the count is John Durgan. Again, Black River coached by Jim O'Neill. Proctor, of course, coached by Darren Carter. And hope you've enjoyed all the Proctor baseball action brought to you by Munger Vision this year. I'd like to thank the athletic director, Arlen Bloodworth, and the head coach, Darren Carter, for allowing me to videotape Proctor Sports, put it on channel 15. Good eye right there as Dobart laying off that pitch. Uh, he'll get that outside corner again at the knee, call a strike. And so Durgan looking for back-to-back -back strikeouts to start off the game. He will do that. Boy, fastball that time, Dobart. Don't know if he's thinking breaking ball or what, but that was right there down the middle of the plate, and that's just what Durgan did, back-to-back -back strikeouts. Now, the number three batter, Chad Thornton, up. So each pitcher with two strikeouts so far here in the first inning, and each pitcher trying to go three for three, a one, two, three inning. Chad Thornton, the third baseman today. Good power Chad has, good doubles hitter, good gap hitter. And basically the most, one of the most versatile people on the uh, Proctor lineup. We've seen him at short, third, catcher, and there's that breaking ball again. Durgan will keep you off balance for that. But when he has command of it, it is a heck of a breaking ball. So Thornton trying not to come strike out victim number three here. See how he spots his fastball? Beautiful. He'll strike out the side and we'll go to the second scoreless. Impressive first inning for both pitchers, both Ryan Kreider and John Durgan. We're in a second. Kyle Ellers up, Kippy Turco, and then Tim Rumrell. And he'll start him off with a strike, kind of handcuffed Dobart. He'll chase down the loose ball, and that was one thing very noticeable by both pitchers. They were heading to count early in the count, too, which helped them dictate the rest of the sequence of pitching. Well, I'll tell you what, there was nothing fancy that Ryan did right there. He just curled back and used that big muscular frame and threw the ball as hard as he could. And it was very effective. Yeah, try to change him up there with a breaking ball. Could have been a change up, looked more like a knuckle curve, but hard to tell from behind at center field, behind the pitcher. One ball, two strikes. That defense still the same. Chad Thornton, your third baseman. Keegan McDonald is at shortstop. Second base, of course, is Rick Carroll and Calvin Knowles over there at first base. Matt Dobart behind the plate. And that'll be strikeout number three. So they'll retire the leadoff batter for the second inning in a row via the strikeout. In center field is Josh Taranovich. Your right fielder is Justin Blanchi. Your right left fielder is Justin Carter. And at the plate, Tim Rumrell, the third baseman. Black River in those maroon and white uniforms. And boy, it had to be low, but it looked good, and it'll be a ball. Coming in way deep at the corner, expecting a bunt, is Thornton. There's that outside corner. Blistered it with a fastball for a strike. Again, you can watch Channel 15 on the old television set, or you can go to the website at pegtv.com, click on Video On Demand. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to get hooked up and watch local sports. Beautiful pitch. Outside corner again. You know what? I want to correct myself. This is Kippy Turco. It was Kyle Ellers that struck out to lead things off. And he will have his third strikeout in a row, fourth of the ball game. So he has struck out Ellers, who led this inning off, and I misnamed and misspoke. Kippy Turco, the catch right there, struck out. Now Tim Romerill is up, and I apologize for that. So both pitchers seem to be on their game early here in this contest. It would be a shame if the injury kept... Carter from being able to pitch as long as he is able to, or scheduled to. And boy, I don't know where that was, but they didn't call it a strike. It'll be a ball. Good pop on his pitches. Good velocity. Good spotting the uh, locations here. And uh, he's had a nice rhythm to his pitching. And see if they call down. No, they're going to say he held up. They did appeal it, and they'll say he held up. It goes two balls, no strikes. We've had no base runners. The only <coughs> contact made was a fly ball to center field by Kowalski. 
a black river. Rumrill ahead in the count. First time today, it's been two balls, no strikes. Now it'll go to two and one. Beautiful placement on that ball. Pitcher's pitch right there. Oh, when Ryan Carter is on, he is devastatingly dominating. Again, hard breaking ball. That could have been the slider right there as he had him out in front of it. 2-2 two, two the count, so he's come back to even it up, looking for his fourth strikeout in a row, fifth of the ball game. This was also in the inning. Rum real set, and the wind-up from the big guy, the pitch. He'll have him. He will strike out the side, and this is shaping up to be a dandy. Durgan will face both Carter men, Ryan and Justin Carter, then Josh Taranovich. Now coming high for a ball. Durgan striking out the side in that first inning. Striking out McDonald, Dobart, and Thornton. Ryan Carter in the cleanup spot. Again, looking for their first base hit. Oh, the ball game. He's been very careful pitching to Carter. He missed outside this time. Carter, in his last two home games, has hit a three-run and a two-run homer, clearing the fences. And this is almost like an unintentional, intentional walk, as it'll be ball three from Durgan. So almost going to concede the base to Carter here. Watch this pitch. And that'll be four balls in a row. So that'll be the first base runner of the ball game for either side. It'll be a walk to Ryan Carter. And I'll bring up the left fielder, his cousin, Justin Carter. See if they're going to go to a courtesy runner. I believe they are. So yes, they'll bring a courtesy runner in for Ryan Carter. This will give me a second to tell you that John Durgan's on the mound. Kippy Turco's the catcher. Chris Kowalski's at first base. Noah Schmidt is at second. Kyle Ellers is a shortstop. Tim Rumrell is at sh uh, third base. Jacob Cavell is the left fielder. Bob Roberg is the center fielder. And Andrew Valenti is the right fielder. Now Justin Carter will foul it off down the third baseline. Tim Sadowski is the courtesy runner. He's at first base. Good speed out there for coach Darren Carter. Justin, his son, will step back in there. Josh Terranovich is on deck. And it's been a pitcher's duel, that's for sure, even though we're only an inning and a half into the ball game. Ryan Carter with five strikeouts, runner back safe. Five of the six batters faced by Ryan Carter all strike out victims, and three of the four batters faced by Durgan have all struck out. High, and a runner staying at first. Turco behind the plate, see if they're going to test his arm here. Durgan, first time from the stretch today. And that looks playable. Yeah, they're going to make the tag and get back to first base will be Sadowski. So that's going to be the out recorded to the left fielder, Jacob Cavell. Runner, of course, unable to advance on that, or wisely did not advance on that. And now Taranovich with Calvin Knowles, the first baseman, on deck. Just because it is shaping up like it's going to be a tight matchup, now there is one down, and they're getting down to the six, seven, eight, nine spot. See if they try to do something with that base runner, Sadowski. And he had a very conservative lead, and he didn't go anywhere. The pitch floated on Durgan. Taranovich, another good hitter in the lineup. Oh, he flinched on that, but couldn't pull the trigger, and. Just trying to remember those three strikeouts in the first inning. I know two of the three, if not all three, the batters took strike three looking. So a very crafty pitcher out there in John Durgan. Durgan stepping off the rubber and Sadowski diving head first back. No throw came and obviously he was safe. Taranovich. As Durgan has... Uh, he got extremely careful pitching to Ryan Carter and walked him. Then he's had to pitch from the stretch, and he hasn't been anywhere near as effective right now. And that does change things up with certain pitchers. Some pitchers are more comfortable pitching from the full windup, some from the stretch, some it doesn't matter. That's going to be the shortstop. This could be two. No, Ellers is going to go to first only, get the shore out, and Sadowski will end up at second base, so he'll become the first runner in scoring position for either side. So they went to Ellers, the shortstop, to Kowalski at first for the 6-3 ground out. And Calvin Knowles getting his first chance to take a swing at Durgan here.
A lot of chatter coming out of the dugouts. This is going to be a spirited ball game. I remember I mentioned those Rutland County Royals. That was a uh, high octane base traveling all star baseball team coached by Glenn Carter and Jim O'Neill. So there's a direct connection between these two teams of a friendly rivalry, but competitive rivalry. Ryan Carter, of course, played many games with assistant coach Jim O'Neill for the Rutland County Royals. So, and Durgan played for the Royals, the pitcher on the mound for Black River. So, I mean, there's a lot of uh, ties here in this ball game, and that'll be out of play. Over the backstop for a strike, and Knowles had a good beat on the ball, just couldn't quite draw the line straight on that swing. Yeah, got some more West Rutland, well, weather printing West Rutland softball action. Mill River softball action. MSA baseball's been on the road, but they'll be home. That's some MSA baseball games for you. This is going to be tough. They'll charge it. Ellers with the long throw, and he'll get him by a stride, and that'll end the threat. We'll stay scoreless going into the third. Well, here's a great case of power against power. Rorig against Carter, and there's raw power there on the fastball. Challenge him with the fastball right down the pipe, and Rorig will take it for a strike one. There's been one ball put in play against Ryan Carter. That was a pop out the center field by Kowalski. And oh, he came back with that nasty, I think that's the slider, but he's got an 0-2 count on Rorig. Tell you, as the games progress, he's gone from a quiet game to a chatty game to a real talkative game, and he will strike him out through the changeup or something. Man, nasty movement on the ball. That is now five strikeouts in a row, six for the ball game, and Andrew Valenti up. I don't know, like I said, if his neck strain is bothering him or not, but he is pitching a whale of a game here for two and a third innings. Valenti and then the number nine batter, Cavell, on deck. He'll go upstairs with a high fastball, and he can't catch up to it. Carter, anyways, is an imposing figure on the mound, and today he's got it going. He's up in the count, 0-2. Not falling behind in the count, A is obviously good for him, but B, it's good for his confidence, the mental aspect of his game, and he's catching him firing. He's not, you know, pouting on the mound or dragging around. He will get him. He will strike him out. They'll just toss it down to first, and that'll be the inning. He'll strike out the side for the second inning in a row. Well, you know what? I should probably let him. Yeah, everybody did what I did. The catcher just left. Yeah, <laughs> there's another batter left. <laughs> oh, so I don't feel as foolish having the inning called early. It's only two outs because the catcher and the third baseman, Dobart and... Thornton let, ran to the dugout, too, thinking it was the inning. But we better get three outs this inning, Proctor, so. So let's go back and do math again. Three, five, six, seven strikeouts now. Six in a row. Has struck out the side in the second, and is on the verge of striking out the side here in the third. And there's that hard break on that pitch again. He's got the 0-2 count. Looking to be a perfect nine for nine. Went outside and just missed with the fastball. Yes, if he gets the out here, Cavell, he would have faced the entire order and went nine in a row. See so what he comes back with for the pitch here. That's going to be out of play. It sounds funny just to hear the bat on the ball right now. Somebody caught up to it and that'll be fouled out of play and we'll stay with the two strike count. There's been one base runner in the game, and that was, a, that was Ryan Carter himself. He was walked in the second inning by Durgan. And he'll lay off that one, and good job by Cavell. Schmidt is on deck if they do extend it, and Schmidt would represent the top of the order. That is in play. Terranovich. Got it. That will retire nine presidents in a row, and we'll go to the fourth, bottom of the third, I mean, scoreless. Some Blondie, Rick Carroll, and the top of the other Keegan McDonald do up. And that breaking ball will be swung on and miss. Durgan himself pitching a fine ball game. He's got a no-hitter going into the third inning. He has struck out the side in the first, but it's three strikeouts he has for the ball game. He has only walked one person. That's the only base runner in the ball game so far. 
Blondie with good speed, plus he starts off the left side of the plate. That's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. He's got to throw across his body. Yeah, lost his balance, and yeah, he was off the bag. He almost got him out. So Durgan with a heck of an effort. Now it becomes interesting. There's nobody down. Do you small ball him over? Or do you send him on a steal just to make something happen? Carroll, Ricky Carroll at the plate, hit a opposite field home run over the right center field wall against Leland and Gray for his first home run of the season. Yeah, they're small ball, and that's a good, it's a good choice. They got one play, it's the third to throw, and they got him. So great bunt, they'll sacrifice him over. The play made at third base by Rumrell. That puts a runner in scoring position. For the top of the order, McDonald. Now McDonald struck out. He was part of that side being struck, the whole side being struck out in the first inning. They are on the grass at third base on the corner. Interesting quandary here is Durgan from the stretch off the fist, out of play, strike one. Again, I'm not coaching, I'm just watching the game unfold in front of me. I was trying to see the defense. Rumrell is on the grasp. So he's not really expecting a bunt right now. McDonald with tremendous speed. Durgan checking runner back at second. That's Blondie at second. That breaking ball broke, but outside off the plate for a ball. Oh, this is shaping up to be a dandy of a ball game. I gave Blondie an infield single on that play. I'm an unofficial book, but that would unofficially be the first base hit of the ball game. Second base runner. They got him. They got him. What a job. They erased Blondie. And there's really no excuse for that. Seriously, when you're at second base, you're looking right at the action. And somebody's got to talk to him, let him know that they stuck him behind him. So two down now, and that changes the strategy tremendously. So we've seen a little bit of everything early in the contest. We're only in the third inning, bottom of the third. So we've had the pickoff. And now we'll just float in there for a ball. So it pipes Durgan with the pickoff play. That, as meager as it seemed, was the best scoring chance. Yeah, that's out of play. McDonald will head back, and he'll just get in the batter's box. That'll be a fall ball strike. Yes, yeah, as weak as it looked, that was the best scoring opportunity of the ball game for either side. So now the, the Proctor lineup getting the second look at Durgan stuff here in the bottom of the third. McDonald set and the pitch coming and nice job. Two strikes of checking his swing. We're getting a piece of the ball to stay alive, so he'll stay at that two strike count. Again, it's too late for you to for me to be promoting, but I'll tell you, I have the AAU Thunderbird Tournament this weekend, and I'm planning on taping a lot of those games, five, six, seven of those games, so you'll have Thunderbird AAU basketball to watch on Channel 15. And boy, there's a lot of talent locally and coming in from out of state, so it'll be, you know, if you're a basketball fan or a local sports fan, it's worth watching it on Channel 15, either on the website, pegtv.com, or right on the old TV dial itself. And that is a disciplined at bat this time by McDonald. He did not chase, and that's the second walk issued in the ball game by Durgan. Carter, Ryan Carter was the other walk. There's been one infield single, and now McDonald with blinding speed, and Dobart at the plate, he struck out back in the first. We're in the third. With two down, I don't think it's a bad deal to start the runner, because that would leave you starting off with a 2-3-4 batter. Next inning, it'll be out of play down the first baseline. Foul ball to the catcher, Matt Dobart. Again, things can really change drastically once you get your second look at a pitcher who kind of dominated the lineup the first time through. Durgan will come to set. There goes the runner, there goes the throw, and he's going to be safe. McDonald will ask for time to get up and dust off. and I like that. I like that. You know, with two outs, it's almost a no brain, especially where you are in the order. 
And McDonald with the kind of speed that he could score easily on a single. There are strong arms in the outfield for Black River with Cavell, Rorig, and Valenti. So Dobart trying to deliver the game's first run. Puts it into play. That's going to be a hard charge. Dovon gets by, and they're going to eat it. That's the smartest play. They got by the glove of Rumrill, picked up by Ellers, the shortstop, and instead of trying to force the play and making the situation worse, he ate the ball, and that'll be a second infield single. And Chad Thornton up. He struck out back in the first. So this will be interesting here. Runners at the corners. I personally wouldn't start Dobar, but it's a great situation, first and third, two down to send the runner from first to second. McDonald getting a healthy lead down at third base. Oh, that's going to score. No, it's going to be caught on the line. That'll end the threat. He hit it hard, but he hit it right to Valenny, and that will be a scoreless third inning. We'll go to the fourth, 0-0 zero, zero on Munger Vision. Well, Black River getting their second look at Ryan Carter now, so he'll go through the order again with Noah Schmidt up. There's been, see Carter go down like that after pitches? I'm not sure if that pertains to his discomfort in his neck region or or what, but he's had a, he's got a no-hitter going into the fourth and he'll be down 2-0. Oh. He's only been behind in the count, two balls, no strikes, one other time that he came back to get the batter. There's been two fly balls hit off him for outs to center field. Uh, now he's got seven strikeouts and he doesn't like that baseball. He wants a new baseball. See him keep flexing his arms and his neck. It makes me nervous when he does that. We're at the top of the fourth. We've got a beauty going scoreless. Oh my goodness, I don't know where that was. Three balls, no strikes. So Black River looking to get their first base runner on. That was a tough pitch to take. That looked about exactly like the other pitch. This time, call a strike. So 3-1 the count. Kowalski on deck for Black River. He'll bring it back to a full count now. So it'll be interesting again to see what he wants to use for his out pitch here. It's the first full count he's had in the, f in the entire ball game. Got him! He might even fall tip cop, but it's going to be a strikeout as he'll take him down. For his eighth strikeout, so he had him at the batter is up two balls, no strikes, and then he had him at full count, 3 2, and Carter came back to get him. That's domination right there. Now Kowalski up, like I said, he flied out to center field where Taranovich made the catch. A lot of K's in my book right now. That's awesome to look at. Trying to bunt, and again, that was that. Uh, and I'm only speculating. It looks like, he, I know he threw a knuckle curve in the old days, but a slider, but that looked like the slider right there. Whatever he's throwing, it's really got the batters off balance today. And that's good, that's good coaching by O'Neill on the other side for Black River. You're not hitting Carter, you're not getting any bats on the ball. Bunt, make him move around, make him think. Oh, great pitch. Absolutely great pitch to left-hander. And they got Thornton in at third base real tight. That gives you a little easier to try to slap the ball by him. So, I mean, I like it. You can't just sit there and just hum at three pitches and go sit down. You try to make them move around on the mound with a... Got him. Nope. I thought I saw the right arm come up. I think he said inside. This time, though, I didn't get all spastic, so... Black River... With Kowalski, then John Durgan on deck. That one just floated on Ryan. I'm not really sure what that pitch was, but it'll be a ball. On a perfect day to play baseball, as long as it doesn't rain. Rain's coming in. That's why this week, game scheduled for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, looked like they could be up in the air. Went back to the fastball, missed at the knee. I started to say, I don't know if the problem with Ryan's neck it could be one of those injuries where the more you move around, the more you stay active, the loose it becomes. doesn't get tightened up on you. So I don't know. It's possible that the more he pitches, the better he would feel. I don't know if that's even possible. He needed to tighten up his cleats right there, and now he'll get all set. So Kowalski's set, and the pitch on the way, and that one was a no doubt about it. That'll be the first base runner. 
He'll come on a walk on a crazy pitch that just got away from him. So Kowalski has flied out the center. Now he's walked. And now it's time for Jim O'Neill, the coach for Black River, to make the decision. What do I want to do with my running game? You've first opportunity to even try to employ some kind of offensive philosophy here. Durgan up. He struck out back in the first. They're expecting small ball. They have Thornton way in at the corner at third. Durgan with good speed out of the box. Plus he's on the left-hand side, which gives him advantage. Right, give him an extra step out of the box. Runner goes, throw down, and he'll be safe. So he'll put himself in scoring position. You know, don't think of taking a small ball off just because he's stolen the base. Got to watch what the third baseman does. Now he's backed up even with the bag at third base. Hey, I got one little black fly that's driving me nuts. There, I finally have something to complain about because it's not windy, it's not hot, it's not sunny, it's not freezing. <laughs> See the runner in the foreground, yep, they chase him back down. Kowalski will go over to center field. Durgan will get set again. Chase the high fastball, couldn't catch up to it, swinging strike. So Carter with eight strikeouts in the ball game, one walk, no hits allowed. And we have a break in the action, and I missed it. I didn't know if it was going to be called by. I think Black River called it. But Black River wanted to have a talk. Now, I don't know what they put on for a play. See if it's a slap play. He shows Blunt, Thornton in real tight. Carter will step off the rubber. Right there, what he did, he wanted to see if they tip their hand to what the play was offensively because the meeting was between Jim O'Neill, the head coach, the batter, Durgan, and Kowalski, the runner at second. A whole lot of strategy because there's probably not going to be a lot of runs today. And he did. He showed bunt. They came back with a full swing. It wasn't really a slap play. He followed it off, and it'll be a strike. Also, cat and mouse and chess and think a man's game all coming into play right now here in the fourth. Black River with their first base runner of the ball game. And Kowalski is in scoring position. Durgan and then Ellers do up. And again, Carter with that. Take a pick off to second. I believe, too, a lot of it is a little indecision on what he wants to throw, plus just seeing what they might break into what they're going to do. And Durgan completely fooled on that breaking ball. Unfortunately, it was inside and off the mark. And I'll watch the defensive alignment. Thornton about four steps in on the grass at third. Now, with two strikes, they're thinking Durgan's not going to bunt. He's going to put the ball into play, and that's going to go through the hole. Runner's going, and he's going to score. Yep. So the first base hit of the ball game will score the game's first run. And what an at-bat for Durgan. So that stolen base by Kowalski was huge. And the base hit wasn't a scorcher. It was just hit slapped enough so that the runner, even though they charged at the outfield, the runner... Had ample time to get around the bases. Now Eller's up. He struck out in the second. That was a pickoff play, but that was also letting some frustration out. On not only giving up the hit, but giving up the run. So it's one nothing Black River. There goes the runner. There goes the throw, and he'll be in safe. I like that. Be aggressive on the bases. Yep, that puts pressure on the defense. Put you in scoring position without needing a base hit or, or to small ball and waste and get an out. So Ellers with one out and a runner at second, one run in. We're in the fourth, one nothing Black River. Durgan with very good speed at second base, and that pitch will come in high. You see Carter now having to pitch from the stretch to see if he's as comfortable from the stretch as he was from the full windup today. He has not gone beyond three batters until this inning. He's on his fourth batter. And that's going to be out of play for a strike on the foul ball. 
started this inning off by striking out Noah Schmidt, then Kowalski walked, stole second, then the single by Durgan. So let's see the pace of the game slow down too now with runners on. All great pitch. Again, nothing fancy, just great mechanics right there. Just a hard, good old fashioned fastball. And I know you're not here, but you should you should be because you should hear that glove pop on those fastballs. Again, Kyder stepping off the rubber, turning to second, Durgan scattering back. And again, somebody has started cooking food on a barbecue grill around the ball field, and I can smell it. It smells awesome. Definitely burgers. That's going to be caught, and McDonald will make the grab. Look at the runner, that'll be the second out. So on a check swing, a pop-up by Ellers, and that'll be an out. Number two here, and Kippy Turco up. He struck out back in the second. Now Turco, the catcher, he'll get up there with two down. Durgan still down at second base. If Turco can extend the inning, Tim Rumrell, the, the third baseman, is on deck for Black River. They show bunt, but it looks more like a slap, and then Carter turned, and nobody covering the bag. Durgan just took a couple steps and retagged. So this has been a very, an inning with a lot of heavy thinking in it. Nick Donald will get it, high as he could jump. He'll end it right there, but Black River does collect a run and a hit, and they lead one nothing going in the bottom of the fourth. Ryan Carter hit the first pitch up over the head as he'll duck down out of the way, and Durgan, a little chin music that time. Carter walked back in the second inning. At that point, he became the game's first base runner. Sadowski came on to courtesy run for him. There's been two infield singles for Proctor against Durgan and Black River. That'll be ball two. Now, Carter can leave the yard and tie this thing up in one swing here. He's a big, strong hitter. You're looking at Ryan Carter, Justin Carter, Josh Taranovich, the three do up. And Durgan dropping down. First time I've seen him today do his sidearm thing, and that'll be ball three. So Carter, one pitch away from walking for the second time today. And they are basically pitching around him. So Carter, for the second time, will walk, and I'd be very shocked if they come out with a courtesy runner for him. I'm waiting and I'm looking and I don't see anybody coming out of the dugout yet. Up at the plate will be Justin Carter. He flied out to left field where the ball was caught by Jacob Cavell. No, nope, Ryan's going to stay in the ball game, so he will run for himself. That's going to be the backstop and Ryan will go down to second base. I'm just wondering the strategy here. I'm just trying to understand it. They courtesy ran for him the first time, but not the second time. Is the neck feeling that much better? So wild pitch, and now Proctor with a tying run at second. We're going to bomb the fourth, and that was letter high for a ball. Good eye by Justin Carter. Carter, just a freshman, Justin is. Also does a lot of pitching for Proctor. And a good eye there. It's laid off that one high and tight. So once again, Durgan struck out the side in the first inning, walked one batter in the fourth, a couple infield singles in the third. He helped himself out by picking off the lead runner that inning, and Justin Carter will draw a walk. So back-to-back -back walks by John Durgan, and I'll bring up Taranovich. And we're going to have time out here as Coach O'Neill wants to have a meeting with his infield. Every game means a lot, but this one, we've had a couple, we've had three strategy timeouts taken by the coaching staffs. This game isn't personal like, like mean personal. This game's personal because you have two baseball purists coaching, two baseball fans, two friends know each other well, two good teams on the field. This game has got like playoff feeling to it. Taranovich, runners at first and second, nobody out. Golden opportunity here for Proctor. Not only to get back 
into a situation being tied in the ball game, but actually taking the lead. The makings of a big inning, two on, nobody out. And that breaking ball broke off the corner too sharp and won't get the call and good eye by Taranovich. Knowles is on deck and then Blongi. See him look the runner back to second. And this time he'll tickle that outside corner with the breaking ball for a strike. Oh, I'd be, I'll fall off the staging if they pick Ryan Carter out from second. So Taranovich digging in at the plate. Great pitch. I just don't understand with two strikes how you don't take the bat off your shoulder. The odds of a pitch coming in around the strikes, I mean, make contact, be defensive. That is four strikeouts now for Durgan, and I believe all four have been looking at strike three. If not four, then three of the four have. That's a big get right there because the runners don't advance. That brings up Calvin Knowles now. He grounded out to the shortstop his last time up, which was Ellers at short. And they're going to have a chat. Coach Carter's going to talk to his batter. Now, I don't think they're missing signs at all. He'll flash a sign to the base runner so everybody knows if there is a play on. This also could be a fake, just to make him think there's a play on. To bring the infield, the third baseman in like they've done, they brought Rumrill in at third, anticipating a play because they had a meeting. He'll show bunt, but he's definitely not going to. And Carter will be back safe. And what was good there about Knowles is he never tipped off if he was going to pull the bat back. He stayed right in that posture of the bunt. I think it's a slap play. I think he's swinging away. So he'll show bunt. They're going to throw the ball out in the center field, and no, everybody held up. Right there, Rorig backed it up textbook perfect. There was no way, especially with his arm strength. It would have been a bad decision to try to go to third base. So a pickoff play almost blew up in the face there for Black River. They're able to weather that little boo-boo and Knowles with one out and two on. one nothing in the bottom of the fourth, Black River with a lead. Surprised by the pitch selection right there. That'll be high for a ball. It'll be a floater in there. Knowles. Again, a lot of strategy going on in this inning, man. There it is. Foul. Yeah, Coach Carter is telling him you got to get that bunt down. It'll be interesting, though. It's not automatic anymore like the old days. With two strikes, they just automatically don't take the bunt off anymore. Coaches are a little more daring. Players try to execute a little bit sharper. I'm not saying he's going to, but we'll see what happens here. With one out, the pitch on the way. Put into play, and that's going to be through the hole. Will they send him? They're going to send Carter home to throw from Cavell. Coming in, it's going to be cut off by Durgan. He'll roll to the backstop. That'll give Justin Carter a chance to get to third base. So an RBI single by Calvin Knowles, and we are tied at one in the bottom of the fourth. And then smartly on the throw through, then the mishandling of the ball by the cutoff. Knowles takes second base, leaving, taking away that force out at second base. There's only one out still. Blongi up, he had an infield single, but then he got picked off second base. So Proctor looking for the lead here in the bottom of the fourth after Black River got the lead in the top of the fourth. Good pitch. Real good pitch to that left-hander. Durgan had two strikes on Knowles and couldn't seal the deal. Knowles with the hit. The RBI single. He committed to it. It's going to be strike two. So Blongi and then Carroll, second and third, one out. A couple walks in this inning, got Durgan in trouble. Oh, 
Again, strike three looking, and the reason I'm beating on that is you've got two strikes. You've got to get that bat off your shoulder. And I believe all five strikeouts have been looking. If not, then four of the five have been looking. Rick Carroll up now with two down and a great opportunity for Proctor here. They don't want to go by. Carroll and against the Leland and Gray team just one game ago hit a home run. He got the bat on the ball. Rorick tracking it. Rorick looking and making the grab. And we'll have a tie game. One all going into the fifth. So to the top of the fifth we go with Rumrill, Rorig, and Valenti do up for Black River. Fastball outside corner, fouled off, strike one. Oh, it's been an excellent ball game. Like I said, it's got the feel of a playoff game with all the strategizing, the excellent pitching, the good defense. Eight strikeouts for Ryan Carter going into the fifth inning. He's given up the one single, and he's walked one batter. Oh, look at the break on that ball. Had his fooled completely, and he waved at it for strike two. Remember the bottom of the fourth, though. Proctor had runners at second and third in a 1-1 game and couldn't get the go-ahead run in. That's a defensive swing. See that? Two strikes, what he did? That's what Proctor batters aren't doing right now. You, you just can't stay in there on a pitch that's coming in and it pretty close to being a strike zone and just watch it coming. Even if you don't like the location, you got to do what he did right there. Foul it off. Rumrill, Rorig, and Valenti. Carter's set. Got him. Strikeout number nine looking. It's that nasty breaking ball he's been throwing. Now Rorig up. He struck out in the third. This is only his second time up today. Taking a look at Ryan Carter. Tell you what, pitch selection. When Carter has command like he has today, it's just wide open. It's a blank check for him with what he wants to throw. Everything's working for him. See, he wants that ball back. He gets a new ball, but he's pointing because he wants to get the other ball back. So he's got to strike one. And Rorig fooled on a pitch. The big wind up, and this time he won't get him to chase. That one's out of the strike zone. One one to count. From Proctor, Vermont today, dandy of a ball game. Whoa, that came high and tight, and some chin music, and it's amazing. Rorig able to roll out of the way and not get hit by the pitch. Neither pitcher has hit a batter today. Durgan, I don't, I don't worry about that. <laughs> Ryan, sometimes I do. Oh, off the fist. See that defensive swing with two strikes? He jammed him. He pulled his body in and still made contact with the pitch. So right there, good job wasting, making Carter waste a good pitch. He got him to put it in play. Oh, the throw. Got him. Going to be safe at first. Got him down the line there. Now I'm unofficial, but I went off the glove of Thornton. I don't know if I'd give that a hit, but I'm not official. Now Valenti up. He struck out in the third. Oh, close play at first. Rorick diving back head first. There is the one out here. Double play is in order. The, tr tr the traditional double play is in order. There goes the runner, there goes the throw, and hits the runner with the ball, and Rorig will have second base. I like that, what Black River's done when they've gotten runners on, which has not been a lot today. But they've disrupted the uh, defensive team with those quick, not wasting time at first base. They're taking off on the first or second pitch. So Valenti with a chance to Give Black River back the lead. Outfield playing extremely deep. Carter aiming that ball that time will miss low. And Valenti struck out back in the third. Like I said, the last outing, Ryan Carter only able to go one inning due to the neck injury. That's a great pitch. So uh, my point there is he should have plenty of gas in the tank today. 
It's just a matter of the equipment stays running. Cabell on deck and he's stealing. He tagged on. I, I don't know who misses now. Everybody usually blames the base runner. That's not automatic. He could have. I, I could have been a missed sign. Oh, well, Jim's calling for a box. Okay, so nobody missed anything. They thought they thought it was a box, and they picked him off, and that'll be two down now. So each pitcher has pitched a runner off, a picked a runner off base. Rory just was caught out there like nothing, even if it was a bocker. Oh, it could have been a straight steal. And when Carter didn't come to the plate, there's a swinging strike. To Valenti, strike two is the call. So looking for his tenth strike out of the ball game and also in the fifth inning, well, the top of the fifth. He'll miss low and inside, put some heat on it and missed. That's the third time today on a pitch to the plate that Carter's hat has come off. I'll have to give him one of those strings that you tie around your chin to hold the hat, the hat on. A beanie hat. And he will walk him. Valenti thinks he's walked. He has. That's big now, that pickoff play, or that missed steal. Cavell up. He flied out to Taranovich in center field. That came back in the third inning. Black River at the plate. Well, just extending the inning another batter like this makes Carter throw more pitches. That's charged by McDonald to get down on the ball. He'll lob it to first. Made a close play out of it. Just did nip him at first. A little too casual, but they'll get out of that inning without a run scoring. We'll stay tied at one going into the bottom of the fifth. Top of the order for Proctor is going to be Keegan McDonald. Matt Dobart, Chad Thornton, and possibly Ryan Carter to appear in the fifth. One to one the score. Best ball game I've done all year for baseball. A ton of the games have been tons of walks, tons of errors, blowouts. This is a this is what I like. This is a good thing. McDonald's been up twice. He has struck out in the first and walked in the third. And Durgan, Durgan himself has done a great job today. He's got five strikeouts. He had three in the first, two in the fourth. Couple walks come into trouble. Knowles with the big base hit that scored. Ryan Carter to tie the game at one for Proctor. But Durgan has not thrown a lot of pitches. He'll get another walk there, so leadoff batter on via the walk. A lot of speed down there at first for McDonald. Now again, will Proctor be aggressive like Black River has been when they get a base runner on? Because there has not been a lot of base runners on. Dobart has struck out, had an infield single. We'll see McDonald over there with that good speed if he's off and running in the first couple pitches. A very conservative lead. There's the throw to first. He'll scramble back. Just basically had to lean back into the bag. That's how short a lead he had over there. Durgan with a very good move for a right-hander to first base. Dobart looking to get hot again like he was against Leland and Gray. Pitch inside. Runner not going. Durgan stopped, asked to tuck in his shirt, and that's what the umpire is holding up the play for. Yeah, they want him to look good for TV, so they have him tuck in his shirt. Dolbart, the catcher for Proctor today. Getting set. Durgan from the stretch. Target's outside. Perfect. Strike called. Hit the target, and again, McDonald staying put down at first base. Proctor at the plate overall today really hasn't been that aggressive and attacking the pitches. There goes the runner. He picked a good pitch to go on, and he's going to be safe. 
And yeah, McDonald's going to go to third base. The ball overthrown. Rorig's throw is going to be to cut off. That's the correct play. So a stolen base and an error. We'll put a runner at third with nobody down. So Proctor now with chance, three chances to get that runner in. Durgan taking a little stroll. Yes, what I meant, good pitch. To, he picked a breaking ball to run on that went way outside the strike zone, forcing the catcher to back in. So he's already out of position with no momentum to throw the ball down. And that's Kippy Turco behind the plate for Black River. So Dobart wanting to at least make contact to make the defense make a play here, put some pressure on the defense. And Durgan stepping off the rubber. A lot of thinking going into this again. Durgan this time will reset himself. The runner McDonald heading back to third. Those walks have come back to get Durgan today. Well, they got him once for one run, but it's looking grim right there at third base with nobody out. Foul ball. Tried to bunt the ball. And I was watching the runner. He didn't break immediately, so it wasn't a suicide bunt. A suicide squeeze. Interesting call from Coach Carter in this situation in the bottom of the fifth of the tie game with a runner at third. Nobody out. Durgan again, being a lefty or being the right-handed pitcher from the stretch, he's looking right over at the runner at third base. So the play is right in front of them if it's a good, if they're going to break home. Dobart, Dobart, foul up into the trees, out of play. Good job though with those two strikes to get that darn bat on the ball, not watch strike three go by. Thornton on deck, he's over two today for Proctor. Dobart and Durgan both taking a long time to get into the uh, at bat here. Oh, he fouled it off. Tell you what, he was fooled on the pitch, and he literally almost threw the bat out of his hands to make contact, but he could hear this little ticking noise knowing he got the bat on the ball. Much better this time through the order for Proctor, not watching strike threes go by. Like I said, Durgan with five strikeouts himself in a ball game. Carter with nine. Not a lot of base runners. Right now, a big one down at third. That's put into play there. They'll charge it. They'll bobble it. They're going to come home. It's going to be a close play. It's going to be safe. The ball will bounce up, and Dobart will stay at first base. You saw the whole thing unfold. Just a little bobble by Ellers of the ground ball. Gave him enough time to come home. And McDonald with tremendous speed anyways. Thornton up with a runner at first and nobody down. Two to one now, Proctor. They've come back from that one nothing deficit. Tied the game at one in the bottom of the fourth and they've taken a lead two to one in the bottom of the fifth. And really, honestly, this is being played like a, like a playoff game. Thornton has struck out and lined out to the right fielder, Andrew Valenti. Dolbart getting about a three-step lead off the bag. Not a very big lead down there at first. I said though, two two well-coached teams. Jim O'Neill, one of the best coaches in, in all of New England, out there for Black River. He's on it. He's on it, and there's the grab. Nice job by Ellers. Good job by Dolbart not getting too far off the bag on that contact and getting doubled up. So they'll get the out, the runner can't advance from first, and that will bring up Ryan Carter. He's walked twice today and he scored a run. So Durgan trying to navigate through this fifth inning with only that one run scoring. That would be quite a job if he can get out of this inning. Carter looking to tattoo one. But again, Durgan's basically walked him 
without intentionally walking him. He hasn't given him anything to hit. He has pitched around him, to say the least. That one, finally there for strike one. So Durgan, we'll be looking at another Carter up next, Justin Carter on deck. Comes inside, you can see Ryan Carter turn away and that's obviously a ball. Dobart staying put down at first base. You don't want to take the bat out of Ryan Carter's hands or the opportunity for multiple RBIs here. Durgan sees the target, bounces it in there. Dobart's going to go, throw coming down, and he'll be safe. So just that little pitch didn't get that far away from Turco, but just enough to allow the runner to go down to second. And now they're going to send Ryan Carter down to first base. So he'll walk for the third time today. Yes, they don't have to intentionally walk like in pro baseball. They just say they're going to walk him and they send him down to first. Okay, so Justin Carter up. They're getting a courtesy runner on for Ryan Carter this time. Now, they didn't use a courtesy runner the last time. It is first time up, but not the second. Now the third, they will bring Sadowski back out. A run in the fourth and a run in the fifth is giving Proctor the 2-1 to one lead over Black River. Justin Carter. Well, this would be a big win for either side today. Durgan. Just a tad bit too far inside. And they're going to talk to Johnny Durgan. So Coach O'Neill coming on out to talk to his pitcher. Eh, taking the ball. The new pitcher is Kyle Ellers. He will replace Durgan who went a little over five or won a little over four and a third innings. Durgan's responsible for the runners at first and second. Justin Carter will get a strike. Durgan went from the pitching mound two shortstops. They basically just flip flop Ellers and Durgan. There is just the one out. Two to one Proctor with a lead in the bottom of the fifth. And you can see right there the swing through that breaking ball. So he's come back and they get a two strike count now. Justin Carter set. He'll go down. No, that'll be a ball. They'll throw it out and they, they got him at third. That's a couple players now, one from each side, that were thrown out trying to go to third base. Coach Carter trying to Dobart, talking to Dobart. And I'm not sure if he missed a sign or not, but he will be out stealing. That is two down. That was a big out right there. And now Carter with two strikes on him. I think it's a 3-2 count to Justin Carter. Eller is trying to put the fire out here in the fifth. He'll miss high. Now it must be a full count. And he inherited the count from Durgan. I'm just wondering if the catcher is going to set up. Yeah, it was a ball. It's a dead ball. And they're going to just stop the runners at first and second. Again, those walks have what's hurt Black River pitchers today. And now Josh Terranovich up. He grounded out to the shortstop, who was Ellers at the time. And then he flaw and then he struck out. One of five strikeouts for Black River pitching today. Actually, those all belong to Durgan as Ellers has yet to record a strikeout in the ball game, facing just his second batter. Remember, they threw Dobart out on a straight steal, it looked like, the third base. Relatively easy, he was out by a couple strides. And Taranovich, then Knowles on deck. There is, There are two outs, though. So. Yeah, and that was high and just out of the strike zone, and a very good eye by Taranovich. This is the kind of inning that makes me wonder, not being a physician, long extended innings of inactivity, does that hurt Ryan Carter with that neck ailment? Of course, I'm sure he wants him to ring up as many runs as they can, so. 
He'll become a moot point. Sadowski is the lead runner at second. He's the courtesy runner, and that'll be ball four. So the base is juiced with two outs. Proctor needing that timely hit. There has been four walks this inning by Black River pitching. <clears throat> and that has been the link, the broken link here today for Proctor. Even though they've only given up two runs. Calvin Knowles up. He had the tying RBI single back in the fourth. Prior to that, he had grounded out to Ellers at short. That will drop in there at the knee for a strike. Knowles, watch that first offering go by. Might want to see, first time you see Neller today, might want to see his release point, his motion, see where he picks the ball up. And that's going to be to the backstop, and we're going to play at the plate. He'll flip it out, and you know what? The runner scampered back. I think that's a good play, seriously. That, that ball to that backstop is not that far away. So a 1-1 count, and tell you what, give Kippy Turco a lot of credit for hustling back to that uh, ball on that wild pitch. Pitch on the way, going to be high for a ball. Nowhere to put them, bases are juiced. Proctor Phantoms everywhere out there. Blondie, the on-deck batter for Proctor. Ellers. First fastball in the count. I believe in the sequence to Knowles, who took that for a ball. So Kyle Ellers in the windup. And that will be inside off the plate, and that'll walk in a run. So Sadowski, who's running for Ryan Carter, will come in. Everybody will move up a base. Justin Carter will go to third, Taranovich to second, and Knowles to first. That'll make it three to one, Proctor. Now Blondie up. He has had an infield single, which was followed by being picked off second base, and he has struck out. And there's a strike with what looked to be a first pitch fastball this time. He had thrown a lot of breaking balls in the first pitch of each count. He got behind in the count. That's going to be Clavel will get to it. It's going to roll by him. They're going to have a lot of runs coming in. There's Terranovich scoring. And they're going to send Knowles around. And no, they put the brakes on. And oh, he's in a pickle. No, he's going to get by. And he's out. You know what happened? The ball got by. Turco picked it up. He is out. So Knowles will be out, and that should end the inning. And it will. I got to tally everything up. Okay, I got a little backtracking to do because I don't have a PA system, and I can't see the back of the jersey numbers. That last batter wasn't Blondie; it was Kyle Bechet. So Bechet had a single, scored two RBIs. So Bechet drove in two RBIs. The score is five to one, Proctor, and this is a pinch hitter for Black River. And I cannot get his number yet. Carter on the mound with nine strikeouts. I am down for a one hitter so far. I'll get the whole line in just a second. He'll wave at that pitch for a strike. So 1-1 one, one count as we're in the top of the six scheduled for seven. It's been a dandy. Black River took the lead one to nothing in the fourth. That's deep in the hole. McDonald on the backhand will knock it down. He'll make the throw and nope, that's gonna go out of play. So the runner will be awarded second base. So good start here for the sixth inning for Black River as they'll have the leadoff runner down at second with nobody out. And if he turns around, number two. Joel Lom Lombard. So Lombard hitting for Schmidt. Let me just get this in the book. All right. So now it should be Chris Kowalski up with a runner at second. Nobody out. So that I don't remember Kowalski batting from the left-handed side of the plate. And he'll step out of the bucket and swinging strike on a fastball. Unofficially, I gave them an infield single. 
to Lombard. Now it's going to be back to the pitcher. Carter will get it, flip it to first, get the out. Runner does go to third base. And now John Durgan do up. He had a single and an RBI back in the fourth. Well, been a real good ball game today. And Eller's on deck. So they're right at the uh, three, four, five spot in the order. Durgan with a good eye laid off that high heater. And Carter into the six. Now, I'm not a position, but obviously he's been able to pitch through the neck ailment. He doesn't have a high pitch count either. Good pitch right there. That was a BB. There's always been good crowds at all these ball games that I've done this year at Proctor, but this crowd is into it today. Both sides. Black River brings a lot of people to their games, too. Can't catch up to that one as it sailed away from the left-handed hitter, and it'll be strike two swinging. So Carter, with at least one strikeout in every inning, has nine for the ball game. Has Durgan down two strikes in the count. Runner at third, one out. That came up top with the pitch, and Durgan laid off that. So a four-run fifth inning propels Proctor into the lead, 5-1. to one. Oh, beautiful pitch. That's that nasty breaking ball, and he keeps the streak alive of at least one strikeout per inning, and he now hits double digits with ten strikeouts in the ballgame. That's out number two. Runner stays at third, and now bring up Ellers, who has struck out in the second and grounded out to the shortstop, McDonald, and that happened in the fourth. We were scoreless through three. We were tied at one at the end of four. And then Proctor with that five to one lead. And boy, I think he went. They're appealing and oh my goodness, they're saying no. Well, I can, I can disagree. <laughs> so Ellers will be having a one ball, no strike count. I think he got a break there. See if he can take advantage of it. And that's off the catcher's glove coming home. They're going to flip it, and uh, the runner went back to third. See the runner right there? The Lombard went back to third. Well, of course, if he had a crystal ball, he would have known that they were throwing the ball away. So in the end, it's just a ball. Actually, I can't, I can't remember if it was. It went off. It was misplayed by the catcher, so I don't know if it was a strike that he just went off the fat part of the glove off the heel. And the church bell's behind me, and beautiful Proctor ringing. It must be 6 p.m. I think Carrie's asking him if it was a ball or strike. Yeah, and the umpires don't know either. They have to, I think it was a strike mishandled by the catcher. I think the umpire called a strike. Well, I, don't, I can't tell by that reaction what the determination was. Been an interesting at bat for Ellers. Oh, great stop by Dobart as he locates it. And the ball never got off home plate, so that's why the runner never broke. So that breaking ball was a hard one to handle. Good job of blocking it by Dobart. Carter taking his time right now between pitches. Plus, he's waiting for his catcher to get all his gear back on and get situated behind home plate. Turco on deck. There are two outs, though. That was a good pitch. Just overpowered him with it. Brought the fastball inside and cranked on it a little bit. Carter looking for his 11th strikeout to end the threat. Got it. That's 11 strikeouts. That's the third out. We're going to go to the bottom of the six. 5-1 Proctor over Black River. Okay, I was late coming back. I kind of got my arm twisted in my scorebook here. You missed ball one to Rick Carroll. Rick Carroll, the number nine batter, then top of the order to up for Proctor. That's playable. Durgan says he's got it, and I believe him. He's a very good fielder, and he'll come in and make the grab. So Durgan will record the first out. We hit the pop-up to shortstop. 
Now Keegan McDonald up. He struck out in the first, walked in the third, and walked and scored in the fifth. The fifth was the pivotal inning for Proctor right now at this point in the ball game. They got four of their five runs in the and there's a strike call in the fifth. Dobart on deck and Kyle Eller is on in relief with John Durgan. Oh, another good pitch. 0-2 oh, to McDonald. McDonald, though, for the most part, has done a very good job in the you know, leadoff spot. He's been on base two of the three times he's been up, and he has scored a run. Off the fist, and Ellers got it. Two down here in the bottom of the six. Jammed him right off the fist. Good pitch. And Dolbar up. He has struck out in the first. He had an infield single in the third. And then he reached on a fielder's choice in the fifth. So Ellers just waiting for Dobart to get in the batter's box. And the lanky right-hander all set now. He's got a chance. Short hop. Oh, that would have been a tough play. Yeah. You know, on that, I'm again, I'm unofficial. I wouldn't give Durgan an error on that. He had one play. That was just a short hop it and grab it. And it was a iffy situation at best. So Dobart will be on for the third time today out of four at bats. Now Chad Thornton up. Thornton 0 for 3 today. He struck out in the first, lined out to right field where Valenti made the catch, and then he lined out to the shortstop, which was Ellers at the time, who's now the pitcher for Black River. And he'll snap off that curveball for a strike on that outside corner for Ellers. Ryan Carter on deck, and believe me, they would love to end the inning right here and not let Carter get to the plate. They have a chance. Durgan will make the play at second, and they got it. Black River. Coming up in the top of the seventh, down by four, five to one. Ryan Carter looking for the complete game win, and yeah, seven inning win here, as he will face Turco, Rummerl, and Rolrig. Ryan Carter today has struck out 11, walked two, and allowed two singles. He's not hit a batter. He struck out two in the first, three in the second as he struck out the side, struck out two in the third. One in the fourth, one in the fifth, and two in the sixth. He looks as strong now as he did at the beginning of the ball game, and that is a strike right there. Kippy Turco today struck out in the second, lined out to the shortstop McDonald, and he's up for the third time now. Carter from the full windup will miss low for ball two. And that defense stays the same with Dobart behind the dish. Thornton at third, McDonald at short, Carroll at second. Knowles at first, Terranovich in center. Bechet has gone into right field. That is a change. That happened last inning after he got the RBI single. And Justin Carter remains in left field. Been a good, good ball game today on Munger Vision. And Carter will let the first batter of the inning, Turco, get down to first on this third walk issued. Rumrell has struck out twice today. He's 0 for 2 against Ryan Carter. Oh, game fire from over. There is a lot of ball game left here. That's off the end of the bat to the screen for strike one. Yes, in none of the innings has Carter overextended himself. He has not thrown a ton of pitches today at all. So I'm thinking no matter what happens here, unless he gets beaned with a line drive, he's going to finish the game out. Runner goes, ball fouled, and it'll be strike two to the runner. Turco will head back down to first base. So Carter with a couple strikes now on Rumrill, looking to retire for the third time today on a strikeout. Runner goes, throw down, and again, even with a five to one deficit in the seventh. Coach O'Neill sending his base runners. I like that. That's been some of their best offense today. So a one two count on a pitch that just missed. 
That's going to be in the gap and drops in. And that runner who stole second is going to be scoring. You see the fake at third, and that's going to be the second run. Dobart holding up the ball and see good base running. Rumrell ends up at second base on a throw through. So an RBI single for Rumrill and now Roll Rig up. That's <laughs> I sound like Scooby-Doo. Ro ro raggy So, like I told you, this is far from over. It's now 5-2 to two on a third base hit given up by Carter. And again, those walks get you. It was the walk that came in to score just now. Walks have gotten the Black River pitchers today. He went after it. That's going to be a swinging strike, and the runner will scramble back to second base. Roll rig today. He's reached on an error. He struck out and then he reached on an error. Oh, well, what a stop by Dobart. Whether he meant to do it or not, it was a great play. So Carter, trying not to let this become a tense situation in the top of the seventh. It's five to two. Proctor, runner at second, nobody out and down in the count. Or did they call that a strike? Oh, by the reaction of the Proctor crowd. That could have been a strike at the knee. Looking for the first out of the seventh. And Carter waits as the runner Rumrill will scramble back to second base. And I'm not sure. I'm waiting to see if he went or not. Uh, they call. They said he did not go. Are they going to appeal that? Uh, there's no way that he didn't go for a strike. Well, in any event, here comes the pitch. Popped up and fouled over the backstop out of play. So we'll stay with two strikes. Again, it's been a good game from the first inning right through the seventh. The crowd has been treated to a dandy. They've responded. Very knowledgeable baseball fans on both sides. And it's been tense. It's been like a playoff game. Right to the end here. And Rolrig awaits the pitch for Carter, who stepped off the rubber. And the runner went back to second. And we'll just redo it again here. Go watch that breaking ball come up about a foot and a half short of home base. And... Again, Rorig, a very powerful individual, so I'm not sure. Carter has thrown a fastball today. We'll see what he comes back with here. Fastball there, popped up, and Carter says he's got it, and I believe Ryan, and he'll make the grab himself. Great, great play there was the communications. So he retires the dangerous Rorig on a pop-up. I could have been in foul territory. I can't see that far down inside. Valenti up, Andrew Valenti up. He has struck out and walked today. Cavell on deck. So Black River with one run in here in this seventh inning, making it five to two and a runner down at second base and just the one out. Valenti set. Carter, the pitch. Outside corner called a strike. That's been a consistent call all day. Actually, it's been a real consistent strike zone all day. It's just a couple of the check swings were kind of mm, iffy. Ryan Carter pitched one inning against Leland and Gray, left with a neck ailment. Told me today that 50-50. That's going to be a breaking ball that will get by him. Now will run a rum roll to get down to second base, third base, I'm sorry. On the wild pitch. So it's been tough for Dobar. He's worked hard today behind the plate. That slider or that curveball, wherever has been snapping off, fooling the batters, makes the catcher work getting down in the dirt, chasing him. Came back with the fastball high and away, called the ball. Oh, yeah, base hit here. You got yourself a nail biter. Yeah. 
One upstairs that time, chasing the elevated fastball. Couldn't catch up to it. Two strikes now on Valenti. Carter electing to go from the full windup instead of the stretch. I like that personally. Whatever makes you feel dominant on the mound. And that's going to be down to second. The run will score. They'll get the out, though, and that's what they're after, the outs. So Black River will cut the lead to 5-3 to three with two down. And Cavell up. He has flied out to Taranovich in center field, and then he has grounded out to the shortstop, McDonnell. Base is clear. And two down in the seventh, Cavell trying to keep the uh, trying to keep the rally alive here. That will miss outside. And the hat comes off for the fifth time today. And I am. I'm going to get him a little string, like you, like a little beanie hat, put under his chin. They're deep at the corner at third. Fouled straight back. He had a rip and a half at that one. I'll tell you. If he'd ever gotten a hold of that one, I'd be ducking out here in center field. Carter with 11 strikeouts, one per inning, none yet so far in the seventh. Big, big win for either side today. Target set inside corner. That's right where he put it. Just blew it by him. I like it. Going back to what works for you. the simplicity. Went back to the fastball and overpowered him twice now. For the ball game and for his 12th strikeout, 5-3 the score. Proctor with the lead. Last strike for Black River. The big man winds up and no, overthrew. Tried to end it with an exclamation point and overthrew for a ball. So again, not a lot of time between pitches. All set. Got him. That's the game. That's the win. Ryan Carter will go all seven innings, strike out 12, give up three walks and three base hits. In a very dominant performance, a well-played game by both sides, well coached by both sides. Great sportsmanship. This was a baseball game today. Hope you enjoyed it. Proctor with the 5-3 to three win over Black River. Get out there, support your student athletes, and I always get behind Munger Vision.